Okay, hi. In this video, you will see how the president and vice president reacted to the hurricane this past September. And the felon continues to spread lies about what is happening and babbles as though he's in the communications gap with the governors from the affected states and the president Biden, which he is not. You also see governors from the two effect, from two of the affected states comment on the great federal support they have received. Also, the felon comments comments on how surprising it is to have a hurricane, quote unquote, this late in the season. When I heard him say that, my thought was, doesn't he know historically this is around peak time for hurricanes? Please watch this video. Jessica, how do you see it? Dramatically differently from how my colleagues see it. Um, so just a couple notes. Trump closes strong in Georgia. He lost Georgia. So I guess if someone had found him 11,237 votes, it would have gone better. But he's a loser there. And then by Starlink, campaign, campaign activity. Oh, he shows up a lot and people see him and then they vote against him. Starlink, there are 40 satellites <laughs> that are already Crooked, going. Okay. Um, in Maui, by the way, the $700 was the FEMA lim limit. So <laughs> Donald Trump and... His supporters are running the same old tired playbook that they did with Maui and they did with East Palestine. So not only was Joe Biden on top of this, he signed the disaster declarations even before the storms hit to make sure that there would be no delay in goods and services. Donald Trump's social media posts contain blatant lies like Governor Kemp can't reach the president. Governor Kemp gave a press conference yesterday where he said, I just spoke to the president. He has promised me every single thing that I need. McMaster from South Carolina, also a conservative, getting everything that he wants, and then Roy Cooper as well. And there's only one president that we are talking about who actually has denied relief for one of these states. In 2017, Roy Cooper asked after Hurricane Matthew for a lot of money, and he got 1% of his ass. They denied 99% of what he was asking for after that hurricane came. There are 3,300 FEMA personnel there, 5,500 National Guardsmen from 11 states, and search and rescue from 19 states. That doesn't reduce the, the devastation of this and how horrific it is, but to say that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are out to lunch during this, or they're sitting on a beach reclining there, they are clearly giving them what they need. They will be showing up when it is appropriate. And it's different for Donald Trump, who is not in office. He's just a guy trying to be president again to show up and throw some bounty at people versus someone who's actually the commander in chief and doesn't want to distract from what's going on. And as Dana said, Governor Cooper said, I will let you know when it is appropriate for you to come. And same goes for Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee. That was Jessica Tarlov shutting down Trump's mouthpieces on Fox News who see a disaster and use that disaster not to advocate for the victim, but rather to attack Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And don't take it from me that that's happening. Take it from Donald Trump himself. We do need some help from the federal government. They have to get together, ideally with the governor. That governor needs to, uh, he's been trying to get them, and uh, I'm sure they're going to come through. But uh, he's been calling the president, hasn't been able to get him. And of course, while Donald Trump claims that the Democrats See, now there's Trump talking like he's in the communication loop between the affected states and the president, which he is not in that loop. He's just trying to get attention for himself, wearing his dumbass MAGA hat. To have been MIA, here's the governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp, speaking himself on the issue. So, I, I just spoke, the president just called me uh, yesterday afternoon. I missed him and I called him right back. And he just said, hey, what do you need? And I told him, you know, we, we got what we need. We'll work through the federal process. He, he offered that if there's other things we need, just to call him directly, which I appreciate. And here's North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper echoing that sentiment. The emotional and physical toll here is indescribable. I will be talking with people this morning. I'm going to head to one of the hospitals to... Uh, mass feeding site to get one-on-one -on -one from people uh, what's happening to them right now. I will be taking with me uh, FEMA Director Chriswell, who will, will be with us. Uh, we plan to Starlink and talk with President Biden while we are there. I talked with both President Biden and Vice President Harris last night. Again, now he said he spoke with President Biden and Vice President Harris. This is another official from another affected state that have said they've been in communication with the president and vice president. 
pledged their full support. This is going to be a tremendous effort in the short run, but looking at it in the long run with the hundreds of roads that are destroyed, communities that were wiped off the map, uh, we, we have to make sure that we get in there, are smart about rebuilding, doing it in a more resilient way. But right now we're, we're concentrating on saving lives and getting supplies to people who desperately, desperately need them. And so even though a disaster like this one has struck the East Coast, still, still Donald Trump is focused not on helping, but spreading disinformation that he thinks will redound to his personal benefit. That he would exploit people at this moment to spew his lies goes to show you what he's willing to do when people are not fighting for their survival. Which is probably why Joe Biden so forcefully shut down a question on Trump's idiotic comment when it was posed to him this afternoon. Mr. President and Governor Cooper, Donald Trump has accused both of you of ignoring the decision. He is lying. Let me get this straight. He's lying. And the governor told him he was lying. The governor told me he's lying. I've spoken to the governor, I've spent time with him, and he told me he's lying. I don't know why he does this. And the reason I get so angry about it, I don't care about what he says about me, but I care what he, what he communicates to the people that are in need. He implies that we're not doing everything possible. We are, we are. And you, and you, you spoke to the governor, I assume you heard the Republican governor of Georgia talk about that he was on the phone with me more than once. So that's simply not true, and it's irresponsible. The notion that the President of the United States has to take time out of his day in the aftermath of a devastating hurricane to debunk bullshit spewed by the Republican nominee for president who is physically incapable of not lying is a warning about what's to come if Trump gets into office. These hurricanes will look tame compared to the chaos that will envelop this country. But here's the reality. While Trump and the right try to paint Biden and Kamala as being absent, knowing full well that their low information audience will take what they say at face value, here's what the Democrats in charge are actually doing right now. Right now. This is Kamala Harris speaking at FEMA today. <laughs> hey guys, I'm going to do the tour right now, but I, I really do mean what I said. I know the work that you all are doing, and um, it is so critically important. The people on the ground right now, you know, we know that communications are still down for so many people, uh, which means that they don't know necessarily what is being done right now by all of you to help them. But I know, based on what you all historically have done, that the folks on the ground who have been impacted, I'm sure, have faith that you all are here right now, as you are, and that they know in their hearts that you all are working around the clock as you've been. And I know it takes a lot out of you, and you're seeing a lot of pain, you're seeing the destruction, you're seeing the damage, and it's the work that you all have dedicated your lives to doing. So I just wanted to come by truly to say thank you to all of you because it takes a lot out of you. And when you're interacting with folks who are on the ground and need help, you know, they look in your eyes to see is, is everything going to be okay? And sometimes you're not sure, right? But you do everything you can to make sure everything's going to be okay. And that's a strength that you uniquely have when you do this kind of work that you all do. So thank you for all that you are doing. Let's keep it up. You know, we have many, many hours ahead of important and critical work, but you guys are just the best of anything that we could hope for in our country. So thank you all. Thank you. And here she is explaining that she'll be visiting, but only when her presence there wouldn't be a distraction or a drain on resources. Over the past 24 hours, I have spoken with Governor Kemp of Georgia, Governor Cooper of North Carolina, and many local officials. I have shared with them that we will do everything in our power to help communities respond and recover. And I've shared with them that I plan to be on the ground as soon as possible, but as soon as possible without disrupting any emergency response operations because that must be the highest priority in the first order of business. A leader recognizing that the recovery effort isn't all about herself, but rather about other people. Imagine being the aide that has to explain that foreign concept to Donald Trump. After all, what's the point of a hurricane if you can't even show up to hand out paper towels and give yourself a pat on the back for helping? In fact, that's not the only foreign concept to Donald Trump. Here he was opining today on the shock of hurricanes happening now in September. Throughout Georgia, as well as uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Virginia, Alabama, and Tennessee. That's our big one. 
And the devastation wrought by the storm is uh, incredible. It's uh, so extensive. Nobody thought this would be uh, happening, especially now it's so late in the season for the hurricane. Now, like I said earlier in this presentation, where he said it happening this late in the season, and my thought, my like I said earlier, my initial thought was, this is the prime time for, this is almost prime time for hurricanes to be occurring, idiot. Yeah, who could have possibly guessed that there would be a hurricane right now in the heart of hurricane season? Truly one of life's great mysteries. And here's another moment where Trump downplayed the severity of the storm, calling it a little hurricane while whining about his crowd size. I want to explain something. The people that you see leaving, because nobody ever leaves. And when they do, I finish up quick, believe me. But I couldn't take pictures at the beginning. So I take them at the end sometimes. If I'm late, the plane gets late, you get delayed, lots of things happen. There's a yeah, who gives a shit? Just keep on babbling. Hurricane going on in Florida, as you know. And uh, so what they do is they say, oh, please come up now at the end of my speech. I said, don't do that. Because it looks like they're leaving, like your husband who owns this place. Granted, this shouldn't be a surprise coming from the guy whose project 2025 calls for the breakup of NOAA, the National Atmospheric and Oceanic Administration, which houses the National Weather Service. So call me old fashioned, but I'm of the mind that perhaps breaking up NOAA at a time when hurricanes are wreaking unprecedented havoc onto the United States might not be the best idea in the world. And as they say, the fish rots from the head because it wasn't just Donald Trump who might offer up some empty words, but then not bother backing it up. Just days ago, Congress passed a C are a continuing resolution to keep the government open until December, but Republicans refused to include disaster relief funds in the middle of hurricane season. Not a single Republican balked when they were passing Donald Trump's $1.9 trillion tax cut for billionaires. No one asked how they would pay for that or the rest of the $7.8 trillion that they added to the debt. But now, when a Democrat's in office, and as hurricanes bear down on mostly red states, by the way, suddenly the fiscal conservatives are back at it, ensuring that the government is nowhere to be found when people need it most. <laughs> and who says these people aren't pro-life? The fact is that Trump and Republicans are fundamentally unserious people looking to take positions of power that could have deadly serious consequences. This tragedy in the aftermath of the hurricane is one instance, but it's by no means the only one. Just as the hurricane is an example of climate change exacerbating the deadly effects of our weather, Trump's actions today are an example of just how unfit he is for office. This is the warning. Our job is to listen to it. You know, unfit for office he is. Okay, now, regardless of what may be happening to people in the country, the felon is always on the lookout for any reason to get publicity for himself because he needs to feel like he has attention. Anything else is irrelevant. I will be watching to see if the felon wears his MAGA hat to his sentencing, sentencing in, in November. Thank you for watching. If you want to be notified of future posts that this channel presents, please remember to hit the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching.